First, first of all, we want to start off by sending our condolences, condolences to the University of Virginia football program, the family and the friends and teammates of those involved in the tragedy, and to Coach Tony Elliott and his entire community. The Nebraska football program is thinking about them and praying for them during this difficult time. That's a sad situation that happened up there. Okay, we have 12 players that's going to walk on, on senior day, that'll be a part of senior day. And some of them that's going to be playing their last game in Husker Stadium. You know, we want anybody considering walking that's going to be on our team next year. We want you to walk, so we want you to have that experience of senior day. Commend our seniors through a lot of transition. They haven't got the wins that they wanted, but they've been stand-up kids, you know, for this program. They gave their all for this program. Questions? Yes, okay, Casey practiced today. He made some throws. So we're still going to take him day by day and see how he feels on game day. But I expect him to be able to practice every day. But we don't know what, at what volume that he'll be able to throw it. Did he rep in team drills today then? Yes, he repped in team drills today. How's, uh, how's Logan doing? Uh, Lo I Logan was better today. He's, he, he's been a little beat up, but he's, he was better today. And he threw the ball around a little bit. And he ran pretty well today. Chubba's out, high ankle sprain, so we'll get it, we'll get him um, in surgery in two or three days. And Mark Whipple, um, will he continue to call from the box from here on out, or do you have an update just on how Coach Whipple's doing? Well, Sean, maybe you can convince him because I told him in the beginning to go to the box, okay? And he got wiped out, so it was bad. But I think he's going to go to the box now. We're gonna, Andrew's going to be in charge of that, so if it, if it doesn't happen, it's on Andrew. But yeah, I think he's going to go to the box. <laughs> on the QBs, just with the guys who are a little lower down but are kind of factoring in now, like Jared Sinek, what sort of is, I guess, sorted out who's where and who made the travel roster? Well, Sinek, Sinek um, he repped today with the, um, with the second unit. So he, he'll be the next guy up, and I'm sure Torres. We'll look at Torres if we need Torres. But Sinek, he repped today. What kind of things would you be looking for from Casey to see if he can go or not? How do you, how do you arrive at that decision? See how the ball's coming out of his hand. You know, he's going to make good decisions, but I want to see how the ball's coming out of his hand, make sure it's not any um, nerve damage or any pain with the throwing. And then we'll, we'll figure it out from there. Like, like I told you before, I'm not going to play him if he's in pain. If he can't play at a high level, I won't play him, Seth. I won't play him. What was your takeaway from Logan's effort in Michigan? I thought Logan had a decent effort. I thought he had a decent effort. I thought he, um, he didn't see it well. You know, he had Trey running down the middle field for a touchdown. He didn't see it, and he's looking right at him. And um, he just didn't see him. But, you know, like I said, that kid needs reps. And he had a lot of reps last week, but I guess it wasn't enough. But um, Logan, when he comes in, he gives his all. He gives everything that he has. He's a tough kid. Hey, Mickey, uh, if, uh, if, if Casey can't play and Trevor's already out, who's your backup to Logan? Uh, Jared, Jared will be. Yeah. Miles Farmer will be available. Miles is back. Miles is back. He practiced today. He practiced well today. I think Barrett has done a really good job with, with Haas because he's playing at a high level and he's getting better every week. So I like where he's at right now. I mean, he was a puppy coming in here. He was a, you know, he's a high school kid. So he, he learned how to play this game at, um, at a high level, and he's playing at a high level right now. We're really excited about his future. Jared Sinek, uh, we don't know too much about him. How, did, how has he moved up? Well, I think because when you look at it as a coach, He's the most athletic one because if you got to go to a third guy, you want him to be athletic. You don't want them all to be the same. So he can go in there and give you some run game and throw it a little bit. So that's 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 where we're at right now. Is Harburg, uh, what, what's been his progression? Is he hurt or what's his situation? He's not hurt. Just, you know, he's not hurt. Okay. Yeah. What about Alante Brown and then Phelan Sanford? I know both those guys um, got hurt in that game. Are they, are they available <clears throat> this week where they have to we're gonna see where Lante's at. You know, he, you know when he tried to leap over the guy, that was a that was a cra um, crazy fall. But um, I think he um, he felt better today. We'll see how he feels tomorrow. And failing practice today. You a fan of guys trying to jump over players? I'm a fan of guys who are trying to get it done any means necessary, and that's what he had to do. And that's 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 what you want on your football team. You want, and you know what he said after that play? I'm trying to win the football game.
And that's what you want. That's what that's what some teams like like where we are right now. That's what we're missing. Just that extra grit that I'm going to lay my body on the line to help this team win a football game. And I like that Elante. That's why I always ride with Elante because at the end of the day, I know he's going to go to battle and he's going to give you a hundred percent. What? That, that, that play, I mean, did you cringe at all when you saw him go that high? Absolutely. <laughs> when you when he jumped like that, I was like, oh, just don't come down on your head. You know, but he hit the back of his neck, so that wasn't any better. But I did crunch a little bit because, like you said, they, they, you know, they're my boys. And when they go through pain, I go through pain. But um, I, was, I was excited about the effort and the, the, the statement he made after that. But he's a Chicago kid now. He's tough. I'm sure that's not the first time he fell on his neck. You know, in Chicago, they play football on the concrete. So he probably fell on the concrete. <laughs> he's a good kid. How do you You got to find it. You got to find them when you're recruiting them. You, you know, you, I, I know somebody said that I offered a quarterback with, with no, no stars or some FCS offers. And if, if I would have listened to that person about Justin Jefferson, I would have never got Justin Jefferson because he was a 2100 player ranked in the country when he came out. So we're going to go by evaluation. So when we're evaluating the kid, we're looking for that grit. We're looking for that finish on every play. So you got to look at it before you bring him here. How proud were you of Justin's performance? Absolutely. I talked to him um, a week ago because he was going up for jump balls, but he was going up with his chest. And I said, just fight through with your hands and try to get your hands on the ball. But, you know, I did drills at LSU, helped him do that. No joking. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you, you're going to have to go to Cali. You're going to have to go to Cali. But I don't think it makes sense to go to Cali and go get a six or seven. You know, I don't think you, you go out there to go to get a six or seven best player because you got USC out there, you got UCLA out there, you got Washington out there. You got to understand kids from the West Coast, they, they tend to stay close to home because one thing Lincoln's not going to be is California, never. You know, we say the same thing when I was at LSU. We didn't go out there a lot because California kids, they kind of want that place to be Cali, and it's not. So we're going to continue to go where we've been going. You know, Texas, Louisiana, Georgia, Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, you know, Jersey, in um, Kansas City, St. Louis, you know, and then here in the home state. So we're going to go out there, but we're not going to go out there and, and, and just say, okay, we're satisfied. We're going to go out there. We're going out there to get, we're going out there to get a draft pick. And hey, Mickey, these the first nine weeks for you have been obviously very challenging in the situation. Just mm -hmm. how much more challenging now will these next two weeks be navigating the program with some of the unknowns that you guys don't really know coming up after? Well, that's what I said in the beginning. You know, we're going to control what we can control. And um, right now it's a two-game season. And we talked about that with the, with the players. It's a two-game season. And now the most important thing on the schedule is Wisconsin. And let's go at Wisconsin. But control what you can control. Maybe you've got seven games under your belt now as head coach. Other than recruiting, what you talked about after the Michigan game, I mean, what in your mind, now that you have this experience, what is it going to take the next head coach, whether it's you or somebody else, to be Roster management, a more competitive roster, you know, and understand what you need to do in this conference on the offense side of the ball and the defense side of the ball, and in special teams because it's, it's a different makeup with, with the conference. So you got to understand that. Then you also got to understand where you're at. You know, you got to understand that you don't sit, you don't sit in the middle of Texas, the middle of Louisiana, the middle of Georgia. That you got to be able to go down there and convince those kids to come up here. So he's got to understand that recruiting is going to be a big part. Whoever sits in that chair, recruiting is going to be a big part, and you got to want to work because it's 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 not like working when, when you're at Georgia because they right there. You got to work here. I mean, you got to work. So whoever takes this job, they better be ready to work. Is it a different roster configuration that you think you need in the Big Ten compared to what you saw in the SEC? Is it, is it well, I think it comes down to depth. You got to have you got to have more depth. You got to have you know instead of having you know 12 offensive linemen, you got to have 15 or 16. Instead of having 12 D linemen, you got to have 15 to 16. You got to have you got to have 12 receivers. You got to have four quarterbacks. You just got to have depth, and it's got to be competitive. Like it can't be a big drop off from one to two. So if you get a competitive roster where they're competing, that's going to make the team better. Why do you think you need more depth in the Big Ten? Because you you bang a whole bunch. You play you 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 play in the middle of the field. You know SEC you you, you cover every inch of the field, but in the in the Big Ten you play in that phone booth. 
So you're going to lose some kids. Because you, you know what I'm saying, Steph? They, like, they're hitting each other like bam, bam, bam. So if I hit you like that three times, you and I, both of us going to be sore. You know? So you got to have depth. You got to be able to play, you know, I said six to eight D linemen. You got to be able to play four to five linebackers. Just because you, you're getting so much banging in the 65 to 70 plays are just banging. That's what I'm learning about this conference. Why are the defenses in this league it's so far ahead of the offense? <sighs> I couldn't tell you that. I can't tell you that, so I better watch how I answer that question. You know, so I, I can't tell you why they're so far ahead, but this, but every week is a really good defense. You know, it's a really good defense. They're all in the top ten, so you got to take your hat off to those programs and to those head coaches, to those coordinators. But it's really good defense in this in this conference. Is there an area or two in the country that you feel like this program could attack in recruiting that it hasn't really tried to um, tried to enter? I guess to try to no. No, I think they, they attacked, you know, Texas. I think they did the same thing. You know, we just got to be more aggressive when we go down there. We got to do a really good evaluation when we go down there and make sure we're getting the right kids up here. Make sure the kid, when the kid comes in the door, that he's equipped, he's ready to play. And if he's not ready to play, he's a year away now. Let's, let's continue to develop him. But I think you got to go down south. You got to go, go where the heat's at. You got to go where they, they're playing big time high school football. Not that they don't play it here, you know, but if you, you know the routine, Texas and Louisiana, Georgia. You know, everybody's down there. Nikki, have you been updated on your status? And, and, and how difficult has this last seven, eight weeks been for you in this transition? I don't think it's been difficult because, uh, you know, I've been having a, you know, I've been having fun, you know, getting it done, you know, because I'm coming in every day to, to get a job done. I haven't, haven't gotten the results that we wanted. But it's, it, it's a great feeling being around these kids and being around these coaches. They, they're top-notch people. They, they, you know, they, not one person in that building, this building has given up. Everybody comes in and fight. Y'all see them. They fight until the end. You know, you know, you you could be in a situation right now where they could have gave up six weeks ago, but they didn't. You know, so I'm having fun. I'm good. I mean, don't worry about Mickey. Mickey's gonna be okay. But, but nobody said Payne is talking about this after the season. No, I no, no, no. They don't, I don't think it works like that. I think when they want, if they want to interview you after the season, they'll let you know, or they'll tell you that a head coach coming in. I'm prepared for whatever. What have you seen from Wisconsin? They obviously hired their head coach too. And mm -hmm. You've seen a lot of changes. Uh, what have you seen from that? Well, no, they, you know, like I said it, real good defense, and they like to run the football. It's no secret. And you know, they hadn't changed much. You know, they they play they they play hard. They they don't do a lot, but what they do, they do well, and they, they don't make mistakes. Is there is there running back any different stylistically than the previous three that you faced? Oh yeah, you see how big he is. He's a big old dude. <laughs> He's about 6'2", 235, you know. He's a, he's, a, he's a really, really good running back. He's probably one of the best running backs we've seen this year. I mean, we've been seeing the really good backs in the country, and the Big Ten has them. But this kid, this kid's special, you know. And, I, and somebody told me he was 18 years old. I mean, to be that big and be 18, that's special. But he's a really good back. There were reports last week about people reaching out to Braylon Allen uh, in Wisconsin, other programs. Do you worry about – No, because if, if somebody does, the kids will tell you. They'll let you know who reached out to them. I mean, I'm, I'm sure, you know, it's happening, you know. It's no secret. Well, Mickey, you, you, yeah, you opened with your comments on, on Virginia. Uh, in your uh, path of, of coaching career, have you encountered a situation where there was a dramatic and traumatic death of Player, player, players uh, on the team that you were at. No, no, and I mean that's that's man, that's sad because I I know the kid that's in critical condition, Mike Hollins, the kid from Baton Rouge. I know him and his father. We recruited him at LSU. He went to University High. That was right on our campus. But um, it's a, that's a sad situation. Uh, you know, it's something that you don't want anybody to have to deal with. You know, you take your heart off to those parents and to the coaches and to the administration. It's a sad day out there. You know, it's a sad day, and you can like, continue to pray for them and uplift them and be there for them if they need you. Probably not in the job description for No, it's not. No. That, no, it's not in the job description. But, you know, they're dealing with it, and it's like it's a sad situation. You mentioned senior day, too. How different is the dynamic of that day these days in the, in the portal era when you have COVID years to factor in? Like, how do you sort of take in and appreciate the moment so much uncertainty? Well, you can have two senior days. You can walk this year and come back and have another senior day. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, 
you get it, you know, you're going to have some kids that's going to walk, you know, and then they're going to sit down and talk to you at the end of the year and say, Coach, I want to come back. Then I'm sure they're going to walk again next year. So that's okay. Like, will Trey Palmer walk? You know, if you talk to Trey, if he's going to do some your day? No, Trey's not going to walk. I didn't, I didn't think so. No. Do you have those conversations with those guys now about whether they'll walk or do they just tell you? They just tell us if they want to walk or not. Andrew did a really good job of doing that. They they go to Andrew and tell Andrew, but um, they didn't. They'll tell you. Thank you.